My name is Tom Lindacki. I'm with I, uh, AMD, and I'm going to talk to you today about confidential guest services within an SVSM. Starting to echo a little. So I'll go over an agenda of uh, reviewing SEV uh, very quickly. I don't have a lot of time in this slot. Uh, talk about a feature of SNP called uh, VM privilege levels and how that will allow for the SVSM to operate. Uh, give an overview and some of the benefits for an SVSM. So SEV review, won't say too much about this. Um, the guests are cryptographically isolated from the hypervisor as well as other guests uh, through encryption. Uh, we Each guest has its own key as does the hypervisor. For SEVES, that was the next step uh, uh, in the evolution of SEV. And uh, Michael Roth had talked about this a little before, but we protect the guest register state in this case. Uh, we start with an initial known state uh, that is encrypted and measured. It doesn't have to be the uh, initial processor state. We can start in 64-bit long mode if need be, as long as it's a known state so that the measurement can be verified each time. On each VM run, there's an integrity uh, check that's performed to make sure that the hypervisor isn't trying to modify some of that state, uh, and the VM run would fail if the mod uh, hypervisor has tried to modify that state, uh, and world switches swap all register state. Uh, we did this by splitting the VMCB and the VMSA, the control area and the, the control block and the save area, uh, and we save additional state now in the save area. There are still times when you need to communicate with the hypervisor and have it do things on behalf of the guest. Uh, and to accomplish that, we came up with a GHCB specification that will allow for communication via shared page between the guest and the hypervisor. Uh, we do, th do that for things like uh, MSR read and write or CPU ID and MMIO. With SNP, we build on the confidentiality aspects of SCV uh, and provide integrity protection. Um, the integrity protection helps pre prevent replay attacks, corruption attacks, that kind of thing. Um, it utilizes the reverse map table, and Michael Roth went into a whole discussion on how that all worked. Um, so take a look at his slides. But the idea is that we have this table that can track information about the guest uh, and whether it owns the page or whether the hypervisor owns the page, the page size that's associated with uh, the 4K page in question, whether it's part of a 2 meg page or a 4K page on its own. Uh, the GPA that has been assigned to it along with the ACID of the guest so that you can differentiate GPAs from um, the same GPA from multiple guests. Whether the page is a VMSA page, which can be used to then uh, run uh, an AP. Um, it can be used then on a VM run command. And we'll be using this quite a bit in the SVSM in order to uh, start APs. Um, and also things like validation, right? The guest has to validate all the memory that it's going to use privately. And we will get a pound VC in the guest if the hypervisor tries to change things out from under, under, underneath us. When we think we should be having uh, access to a private page, that we've already validated, but the hypervisor has decided to try and mess with the guest. So a feature of SMP uh, that we're going to use is called uh, virtual machine privilege levels. Um, this allows a guest to divide the address space up into up to four levels. We have VMPL 0 through 3. Uh, with zero being the most privileged, right? And this allows a higher pri privileged VMPL to provide secure services to lower privileges, privileged VMPLs. Uh, the VMPL level is represented in the VMSA of the vCPU that is currently running. Uh, and 
today in the KVM in uh, uh, Linux SMP patches that we've been sending upstream and working with, everything is VMPL zero. The RMP entry has additional information in there related to the VMPL levels, right? So this is where that information can differentiate the privileges associated with VMPL zero, VMPL one, and VMPL two. Um, we have read, write, execute permissions, um, and you can only set the permissions for a VMPL lower than you are currently running. And so you can't try and change your current access permissions or those of a higher VMPL level. So that brings us to how we create an, uh, an SVSM or a secure VM service module. There's a specification I was hoping would be posted already on our site, um, our developer site. It should be there very soon. It did go out on the SMP mailing list a while ago and we were asked to take ownership of it at AMD. So just working through all that and that'll be posted uh, shortly. But the concept is that the VMPL zero is used for the SVSM. So we will create the SVSM VSP at that level um, and then initiate the booting. That VMPL zero VMSA is then used or, or VMPL zero VMSA is then used for all the APs that we want to start. Okay, so we only measure, encrypt and measure the BSP. So we should make it a little easier for now. Multiple vCPU guests, uh, you don't have to know how many vCPUs the guest is starting in order to determine your measurements for attestation and things like that. We'll have just the one BSP. Um, the SVSM will then create a VMPL1 BMSA that will then be used to then boot the, say, OVMF BIOS and then the Linux kernel, All right? So as you can see, we'll have a AP for each, uh, an SVSM AP for each OS AP. And they're just running at different BMPL levels. And I'll talk a little bit about the communication on how the OS will, uh, contact the SVSM in order to perform certain operations. So the, some of the uses we're looking at using uh, an SVSM for is gonna be live migration uh, and a virtual TPM instance. And there are probably others out there and hopefully once the specification is ready, uh, we'll talk about that and do all the communication over the Linux Cocoa mailing list. So in order to do this VMPL transition, um, we had to create a new GHCB event and that will allow the guest running in say VMPL one to prepare its request. And that request will be anything from like say a P validate instruction uh, that will require input into general purpose registers. And then it will issue a VMG exit resulting in GHCB request to, to ask the hypervisor to now run the VMPL zero level. Uh, the hypervisor loads up the VMPL zero, VMSA and GHCB, uh, the state associated with everything and issues a VM run. So now the SVSM is back in control. It can look for the request from the guest, process the request, take any output that is generated as part of that request, put it back into the guest VMSA, uh, the VMPL1 getting VS, VMSA, and then request the hypervisor to now run VMPL. And so now the guest is at VMPL1 running again, and it can check the results of the request and continue on. The specification will talk about all of the ways that this is done as far as the protocols and functions that are associated with everything. Um, there is a calling area page that's used to communicate to verify that 
uh, request was actually made so that the hypervisor just can't try and run VMPL0 all the time uh, and try and trick the, the SVSM into doing something that's already been done or things like that. So the overall boot flow of how this SVSM will start up, it's very similar to uh, standard um, SEV boot today, but instead of loading and measuring uh, the SNP, yes, that VMPL0, we're going to load and measure the SVSM binary at VMPL0, along with all of its CPU ID page and secrets page and other, other things like that. We'll then load and measure the OVMF BIOS at VMPL1, and we also include the OVMF uh, BSP contents and measure those. We don't create a VMSA page out of that. We just measure those contents, and it'll be up to the SVSM to copy those contents and create the um, BIOS BSP. So the initial boot will load the VMPL0 VMSA, um, and then KVM will issue the VM run. At that point, the SVSM will go through its startup and initialization. It'll accept all the memory that it has available to it. Um, it'll create all the APs that it, uh, are defined for the guest. Uh, it will then locate and prepare the BIOS. Right now, we're doing that through uh, QMU uh, firmware config. Um, but it'll copy everything over as the specification talks about and then create the VMSA for the BIOS uh, and set that to VMPL1. At that point, will then ask for the VMPL1 to be run by the hypervisor, and the hypervisor will, will kick that off, and now your BIOS and OS start, start up as what you would normally see just at VMPL1. So what did we need to do to, uh, to, to get this all to work? So from a VMM and hypervisor point of view, uh, particularly QMU, we had to load and measure the SVSM at VMPL0 uh, and then the BIOS and OVMF at VMPL1. Uh, and then we are going to boot the SVSM BSP state instead of the BIOS BSP state. Um, we had to modify KVM to be able to support uh, a VMSA per VMPL per vCPU. So there now can be up to four VMSAs if you really wanted to do VMPLs two and three. We're only really working with zero and one. Um, there's a new DHCB request to be able to pull all the APIC IDs so that we know how many vCPUs are available and we'll use that to, to create all the APs. Uh, we can actually use this new requests also just in SMP in general, uh, if it's available, and then that way we don't have to measure all of the guest APs as we do today in, uh, in the current SMP hypervisor patches. That will be something that we can look at doing uh, once, once we uh, get the GHCB specification updated to, to handle that. And then we just have to be able to be able to switch between the GHCB and VMSA uh, for the VMPL level that we want to run. Uh, in the guest support, the main thing is to be able to detect that we are not running at VMPL0. VMPL0 is uh, the highest privilege, and only VMPL0 is allowed to do a p-validate, and only VMPL0 can do an RMP adjust against a page to create or turn that page into a VMSA page so that it's usable on a VM run command. Um, so as part of detecting that we're at VMPL1 or lower, higher numerically, um, we use that to help detect the presence of an SVSM and then use a new interface through the SVSM to, to actually p-validate all the memory. So, so it, it's a little bit of extra time in switching back and forth but we try and do uh, a lot of p-validates at once and, and, and batch them all up. Um, we use the AP create for creating all the APs in the BIOS. Uh, and so 
as I said before, we're only now measuring a single vCPU, but, but now able to run uh, multiple vCPUs without having to measure all those extra vCPUs. But we will have to make a call to the SVSM in order to churn, change the page that we create from a, into a VMSA page through the RMP adjust instruction. So for, for live migration, we need this um, concept of the VMPL0 and VMPL1 uh, in order to make sure that the hypervisor isn't trying to um, be malicious during our migration. So the hypervisor is going to maintain a list of guest page encryption state. We also know the pages that have been encrypted and the range of pages that uh, are available to the guest. Um, and then this is more of a, an overview of what we're going to do, but we have to uh, transform any encrypted pages for transport. And the hypervisor would uh, call us to let us know, call the SVSM to let us know that uh, we need a, a page transformed. And when that happens, we're going to mark the page read only uh, in the VMPL levels or permissions so that we know that if, if the guest has, makes a change to that page, but the hypervisor never comes back to us, um, we'll be able to track the state and know. And, and when it's read only, the guest won't be able to really make progress because it won't be able to update it because we need to be able to, in the SVSM, change that permission in order for the guest to make forward progress. Uh, on the destination side, the SVSM would be invoked in order to, to pull the page in uh, and, and put it into the, to the guest memory. And at completion, we would then just transfer all, all the state required over from the source to the destination, terminate the source, and uh, start execution on the destination side. Uh, kind of a high-level overview picture of how this would all work. Um, we'll have to work on how we trust the destination. So that we're going to have to go through attestation from the SVSM side uh, when we attest the SVSM on the destination side. Um, at that point, once that started, we're going to uh, move any state that's uh, initially needed over to the destination side and then just start moving pages uh, and again marking everything read only as we move it to ensure that we get everything uh, copied over. Now at the end if we find that all the pages haven't been moved from because uh, the SVSM has to finalize all of this if we find that the pages all the pages haven't been moved or there are pages that we thought should have been moved um, and, and, and weren't, then we can uh, terminate the live migration so that we, we ensure the destination isn't running in the wrong state. Another uh, service we're looking at providing in the SVSM is a virtual TPM. Um, this is probably going to end up being like a new protocol and functions within the SVSM specification. Um, but since it would live completely within the SVSM, it would become part of the attestation of the SVSM. Uh, and because it's running at VMPL0 and uh, BIOS and uh, Linux are running at VMPL1, uh, we can use a secure boot within the guest to, to verify the, the booting of the, uh, of the OS, the BIOS in the OS. Um, there's still questions on how we're going to, say, maintain persistent state if we wanted to do persistent state. Um, you know, how we provide the initial endorsement key. There's talks, and I think uh, there's going to be talks later about some of this, um, about maybe doing uh, ephemeral uh, TPMs where you just generate a new EK each time and um, have to somehow uh, get the appropriate storage root key if you wanted to be able to use a TPM to, uh, to wrap keys in, uh, in, in a persistent manner. But that's all, all stuff that we hopefully will talk about on the mailing list uh, once we start um, putting this out there for uh, adding it to the SVSM specification. So 
Just a kind of a summary of where we are now with the SVSM. Um, we have a proof of concept Rust version uh, up and running, has support for most of the what's called the protocol zero uh, versions of the functions. Uh, so we're able to boot an OVM, you know, multi vCPU OVMF Linux and uh, uh, guest at VMPL1. Um, the guest support requires discovery of the SVSM, um, page validation through the SVSM, and then vCPU creation uh, all through, again, through the SVSM. The hypervisor sp uh, support also requires recognition of the SVSM binary being requested, measuring that at VMPL0, and then switching to measuring the BIOS of VMF at VMPL1. Uh, and booting the SVSM uh, BSP instead of the BIOS BSP. Um, we also have to make sure that KVM can handle the multiple VMSAs per, per vCPU and um, uh, also the switching those out when we need to run different VMPL levels. Um, the code's all available right now upstream on our uh, AMD uh, uh, page, the AMD ESE uh, GitHub page. Um, the uh, Linux SVSM was released a couple of weeks ago in Rust. Uh, and we have preview branches um, that probably need updating under the, uh, with, with the updates to the hypervisor, SMP hypervisor patches. Uh, we're still running under some of the old uh, SMP hypervisor patches. Um, but the, the previews will, will allow you to, to boot and run a, uh, in SVSM. And that's all I had. Is there any questions? Yes. Why does the guest trust the SVSM? Because it seems like the hypervisor is still involved in measuring the SVSM and providing yeah, so the question is why would the guest still trust the or trust the SVSM because the hypervisor is still involved? And that goes into the attestation and uh, of the SVSM, right? So we're still going to, as part of the SEV launch process, measure the SVSM, measure the uh, vCPU state, um, and then uh, the, the SVSM will will boot and start to boot the guest, and then the guest will have to go through attestation to, to verify. Now we're gonna have to make the attestation report available, so we probably need to extend the SVSM specification in that case to make that uh, VMPL0 attestation report available. Uh, and uh, once, and the attestation report can only be requested from within the guest. So the hypervisor can't, uh, can't mess with it in that sense. So once it attests everything, then, then it can trust it. Yes? Uh, you mentioned the uh, Linux SVSM. Are you implementing a different one for Windows or other category? Yeah, so the question is, um, I mentioned the Linux SVSM. Is there uh, a vision of adding it for, say, Windows or anything else? Um, our group personally probably won't be doing anything, but the SVSM specification is designed to be uh, just the general, how would any guest communicate with any SVSM? And so you can think of any, you know, whoever is going to write an SVSM. The SVSM that we wrote is currently geared towards KVM uh, and Linux, uh, but anybody could write an SVSM that as long as it follows the specification for the calling conventions for those functions, should be fine. Is there a proposed calling convention between KVM and, and the SVSM rather than the SVSM and the guest? Uh, the question is, is there a calling uh, convention or API specification between the SVSM and KVM? Um, no, that was specifically kept separate so that you could have multiple SVSMs uh, and multiple hypervisor interaction, right? So w I envision that for the KVM SVSM, we're going to extend the GHCB specification to control that interaction. 
All right, but the guess to SVSM is what the SVSM specification covers. So the question is, are we putting any safeguards into the SVSM to try and guard against uh, some of the issues or concerns that SMM has today? Um, probably, you know, we have to take a look at everything, um, you know, but uh, hopefully the, the VTPM instance should be um, only grabbing input from register state and not necessarily writing to memory, right? And this is all going to be open source, so we should be able to audit it pretty pretty easily and make sure that we're not going to uh, have anything where where we're arbitrarily writing to to memory, so guess you memory. Well, so the SVSM lives in outside of uh, any guess memory and has its own you know, page tables, and it's in a, like our current current implementation lives up around, you know, I don't know, somewhere around 512 gig or something, uh, just as proof of concept, and uh, has like 32 meg or 256 meg of available memory to, to run in. Um, it can be shrunk down, but the guest doesn't know about that memory, and even if it tried to somehow access it, um, the VMPL permissions would prevent it from accessing it. And then the reverse, um, uh, we have page tables in the SVSM that won't map or won't map guest memory unless it's needed to be mapped, right? So like when we're dealing with VMSAs and we have to uh, ensure that a request that came up is not trying to start, say, a VMPL zero VMSA. We have to map that temporarily to, to lock it, make sure everything looks okay in it, and then un, unmap it, right? But in general, we don't have the guest memory mapped. Any other questions? All right, thank you.